So RSV rates, typical spike during this time of year, but it seems to be happening a little bit earlier than usual. So why might that happen? Yeah, RSV was uh, usually very predictable in the, the winter months, but COVID changed everything, right? And so, uh, so we've even seen some in the summer. Uh, we certainly are now starting to see it worsening again in the winter months. So we're probably getting maybe closer to what it used to be um, as we're heading into the winter cold months. What do you mean what it used to be? Uh, back into the normal winter uh, time, you, you typically would see the colder weather coming uh, you know, in December or so, and, and RSV would, would hit then and not let up until spring break. And uh, so uh, while after COVID, we had some summer spikes. Uh, um, the, it certainly seems for this year so far that the winter is going to be much worse than the summer. Mm -hmm. Just talk about RSV, talk about some of the signs, you know, mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. So RSV is just another cold virus of the long list of viruses that can give you bad colds. Um, we could even consider flu a cold virus also, but obviously it's the worst. Now RSV is also unique to other cold viruses in that in infants and small toddlers, that virus can go from the nose down into the lungs and cause bronchiolitis not bronchitis, which is more of an adult problem caused by bacteria, but this is a specific problem that viruses can cause in babies' lungs. Now, even the name RSV is about the lung changes that you can see that is specific to RSV when you look at the lungs under a microscope. And so we can both see in the lab what RSV does to a baby's lungs but we can also see with our eyes. And that is what we really try to educate parents on and that, you know, coughs can sound wet and nasty and noses can look really nasty and runny and crusty. Uh, and they can even feel uh, like there's a lot in the chest, but really most of that is just upper airway mucus and congestion. But when they can see the chest, and the abdomen of the baby moving in and out to help them with their breathing, then we know that has gone from just a cold virus in the nose to bronchiolitis in the lungs. Mm -hmm. So RSV is typically a thing that affects younger people in general. It can sometimes affect older, you know, older individuals as well. Sure, us adults catch RSV as well, and, and it's a pretty severe cold. You, you almost think you've got the flu, um, but it will just stay as a bad cold in the upper airways and not get down into the lungs like it's going to be with an infant or a small toddler. Mm -hmm. So this spike seems to be happening a little bit earlier than usual. What are some things you just talked about a little bit that parents can look for, but if they think their child may have it, what can they do? Sure. Certainly if, if you have an infant or a one-year-old, maybe even a two-year-old, who has been having a runny nose and cough and probably some fever, um, but then they're starting to just look worse. They look like in their chest they're having more difficulty breathing or you can see their ribs sticking in and out when they breathe. We call those retractions. If you can see those things, and that's the time to go ahead and call your doctor um, get some more questions answered and perhaps uh, come on in and get checked out, have an oxygen level checked to see if this is something that is progressing to the point that uh, even maybe the infant may need to be hospitalized. So there, are, there is a new drug that was approved by the FDA. Do you know anything about that? We did talk about it a little bit earlier at KFTV, but... Yes, it was very exciting the summer when we all heard that there was going to be a new uh, prevention for RSV. It's an injection, not really a vaccine, yeah. but more like a medicine that kind of stays in the system. And uh, the problem is that, uh, that even though there was the big fanfare, very little was made. And so the hospitals who hopefully will be able to give it to babies before they go home next RSV season, um, that just wasn't available this year. And so uh, while we have a few doses in the clinic, they've been mostly given to babies with higher risk, certainly new babies with heart disease or some of the lung disease. And uh, so hopefully we'll have a little bit better story to tell this time next year. Mm -hmm. Any last tips or tricks for parents as we go into the season, especially with flu as well? The main thing with all of these respiratory viruses is infection control. 
you know, if you can keep uh, your child, you know, uh, uh, six feet or more away from crowds and, and other kids, great. But we know some kids have to go to school and to daycare. And so, uh, so even from early ages, trying to, to teach hygiene and hand washing and sanitizer use, uh, all these things are going to help. Uh, in these winter months when you try to avoid infections, but you can't always do that. As far as treating RSV, this can be very difficult in that, especially in these babies who are having trouble breathing, there's often nothing that can be done. You're just having to watch their bodies fight this off and repair themselves. Although, oddly, the last few years, uh, RSV has seemed to cause some bronchiolitis that actually does respond to albuterol breathing treatments. And so another reason for potentially getting into the doctor's office if the baby appears to be wheezing is to give a breathing treatment a try just to see if that helps. Mm -hmm. So just kind of expand on that. Once you're in the doctor's office, what are some things that you guys do? So once a baby or a young toddler is brought in with cold symptoms, we're going to look at them just like we advise the parents to, to see what kind of distress they might be in with their breathing. And if they do seem to be in a little distress, having these retractions, then you know, we're certainly gonna to listen to the lungs. Do we hear good air movement or do we not hear movement much at all? Um, do we hear wheezing from the bronchiolitis or not? Now we can also run a quick RSV test, um, but even regular cold viruses can cause bronchiolitis as well. So we're really on the watch for bronchiolitis, whether the baby has RSV or not. It's just that your chances are higher to have bronchiolitis if the baby does have RSV. And then if they do seem to have the squeezing, trouble breathing, then we're gonna check an oxygen level to see, is this a baby that uh, we need to see back the next day? Is this a baby that we need to give ER warnings for? Uh, or as has happened twice already, this RSV season, we have to call the ambulance from our office uh, to take the baby directly to the hospital.